Okay, look, ladies and gentlemen, so this is our K5ES walkthrough. We'll be using our textbook if we need to, but this is all about the verb gefallen. So on the verb gefallen, which means to please, the idea of this verb is that it flips the sentence around. Instead of you saying, I like that t-shirt, you say, the t-shirt pleases me. A German might say, I like that t-shirt, and it would be done like this. Ich mag um, das t-shirt. But you're not going to see that very often. You'll only see that about 20% of the time. Most of the time, you'll see the t-shirt pleases me. All right, so now let's take a look at this real quick. When a German wants to say that he likes something, it's very common to hear him say, such and such pleases me, or such and such is please me, if that item happens to be plural. When the item being liked is plural, like shoes, we're going to use gefallen. When the item being liked is singular, like a sweater, we'll use gefallt. If we look at the examples, it's pretty clear. A plural example. Die Schuhe gefallen mir. This translates to mean, I like the shoes. But literally, it's the shoes please me. Here's the word for me right here. Um, if I want to say that the sweater pleases me, I'll say, der Pulli gefällt mir. In smooth English, we'd make it say, I like the sweater. But in German, we'll say, the sweater pleases me. The item that's being liked is the subject of the sentence, and therefore, it's in the nominative case. So the shoe, die Schuhe, that's your subject. And the Apuli, that's your subject, OK? So they're the subject of the sentence. The whole sentence is flipped around from our brains, the way we like to think about stuff. And the person who likes the item um, and is receiving it, they're receiving the action of the um, clothing pleasing us. And so that's actually going to come from this column here, where it says dative pronouns. Um, I guess that's what I need to explain to you now. Normally, if something is a direct object, it's in the accusative case. But when it's the verb gefallen, gefallen is a special verb, and it happens to be automatically in the dative case. Normally, if something's a direct object of a sentence, it's here in the accusative case, but not this time. This is a dative case um, verb, and so it automatically pulls from this column. So the word for me is wer, the word for you is Dia. The word for him is ihm. The word for her is ihr. The word for it is now ihm, which is just like this one, the, just like the masculine. The word for us is uns. The word for you guys is euch. The word for them is ihnen. And the word for you formal is ihnen. Okay? So weird. Uh, gefallen is a dative verb. So the person receiving the action is um, in the dative case. Then we have this. Um, you will have Germans constantly start sentences with mir and dir, but mostly mir. If you say, for example, mir ist peinlich, you mean, um, you mean to say, I'm embarrassed, but what you're saying is, embarrassment is me. If you say mir ist heiß, you're saying, um, it's hot by me. Because you would never say, ich bin heiß, because if you say, ich bin heiß, you got all kinds of uh, problems where you're looking for a date where you don't want one, right? So you'd say mir ist heiß. So you'll often hear Germans start sentences with the word mir. And it's kind of weird. It sounds weird to us because mir gefallen alle Klamotten literally translates to me pleases all clothing. And in other words, all clothing pleases me. <laughs> and so in other words, I like clothing. I like all clothing. OK? So it's kind of weird. All right, so now next section. It says, we want to put in the appropriate clothing name. We want to put the correct pronoun, in other words, mir or dear or im or whatever. And we want to use the correct form of gefallen. And that's going to either be gefällt or gefallen, depending on if the item of clothing we're talking about is singular or plural. So let's do number one, everybody. It says, the skirt um, pleases me, is what I wanted to say. The skirt pleases me. So you'll write this. You write the skirt, der Rock, and it happens to be the subject because when we're doing sentences in this sort of construction, I know for a fact that um, the skirt is doing the pleasing. Gefällt mir. Boom. The skirt pleases me. I like the skirt. 
Now you do number two. Number two is a great example of how Germans don't start with the subject. In this case, number two, they're going to be starting with the direct object. The subject will be at the very end. So here's what I start with. I start with the tennis shoes. They're over here. Oops, moment, mal. Okay, so D, tennis shoe. Oh, turn shoe. I could say tennis shoe, though. Actually, they do say that. I put D shoe over the matter or no? Nah. D, turn shoe, and there's two of them, so it's gefallen. And who do they please? They please you, dear. So this sentence looks like this. Dear, dear gefallen, die turn shoe. The um, tennis shoes please me. I like the tennis shoes. In other words, you like the tennis shoes. That's what it says. Okay, do number three. We're talking about the dress. The dress pleases her. In smooth English, it would be she likes the dress. The dress pleases her. This one is nice because it's in the order we can handle. One dress, so I'll use gefällt. Das Kleid gefällt ihr. Number four is going to flip it around again. You do need to remember that when we talk about pants in German, that they are singular. They're not plural like they are in American English. So here we go. So we want to say him, pleases the pants. And I use a singular form of gefallen. I use gefällt. And the last one is the belt pleases me. This is nice. It's a nice word order. So the belt is der Gürtel. Bing, bing. Pleases is gefällt. Bing, bing. Me. Let's quickly put a smooth translation. Are you ready? We're going to put here, um, I like the skirt. Put it, I like the skirt. Right here, you like the tennis shoes. You like the Tennis shoes. Right here, she likes the dress. This one, he likes the pants. And finally, I like the belt. Ah, it's so weird. It's so weird. I like the weird. No, I like the belt. Okay, flippin' sie das Papier bitte. <laughs> okay, so sagt man das, the German for these expressions. I would like a jacket, please. Who knows how to say would like? Yeah. Close? Nuschta. Can you do the sentence? Can you say, I would like a jacket, please? I dare you. I'll go for it. Wunderbar. That was amazing. I'm so pleased. Ich möchte, pink pink, eine, because it's feminine, Jacke, comma, bitte, to be polite. Well done. I am looking for a blouse. Oh gosh, that's a nice smooth translation. We don't say am looking in German though, are we? You're gonna say that? No. Mm -hmm. What are we gonna say? You know? Ich wusste eine, I forget the term word as well. That's not terrible. Ich suche eine Jacke. Yay. Okay, so the word for am looking is I seek. I seek. Ich 
Zucha, that's S-U-C-H-E. Aina Blusa. I seek a blouse. Yes? Yes. Okay, moving on. Next. Um, if a clothing item is the subject of a sentence, then it is in the nominative case. So, for example, by the way, how do I know? It's really simple. If you have somebody wanting something, would liking something, seeking something, buying something, taking something, if there's a human in the sentence, the human is in, going to be your subject, unless you're dealing with the verb gefallen. That's the only time it'd be different. But um, if you're just describing the clothing, if you're just saying the suit is nice or whatever, if you're saying that the suit is nice or it's ugly or whatever, if the clothing is being described, it is automatically going to be your subject. So if I say the suit is nice, the word for the would be der. Der Anzug ist schön. And this is in the subject case. See, right here? Boink, subject. If I'm saying a suit is nice, then the word for a is ein. Ein Anzug ist schön, right here. Boink, in the subjects. Okay? Now, if the clothing item is receiving the action of the person, like the person wants it or needs the item, then that clothing is now a direct object of the sentence and it has to be in the accusative case. So he needs the suit. Um, needs is my verb. Who's doing the needing? He is. What does he need? The suit. It's my direct object. Er braucht den Anzug. So it's shifted down to the accusative case. He needs a suit. Er braucht einen Anzug. So now I'm moving to the second column. Den and einen. Okay, it's our turn. Let's do this. All right, let's try this. So we've got um, Guten Tag. Haben Sie blank Wunsch? So I guess what you need to do is you need to spend a couple minutes looking up these words and make sure that you know how to say Wunsch, for one thing. Is that masculine? Is it feminine? Is it neuter? And so I need you to write haben Sie blank wunsch, and it has to be a wish, a skirt, the skirt, a blouse, the blouse, the t-shirt. Take a couple minutes and make those filled in. When you do the translations, let's put them in literal, awkward translation, okay? Go. Okay. Guten Tag, haben Sie einen wunsch? Have you a wish? Yeah. Ich suche einen Rock in Blau. Was kostet der Rock hier? I seek a skirt in blue. What costs the skirt here? Um, when you're asking a question, you should always reorganize it as a statement, and you would be surprised how many times you are really dealing with a subject. Er kostet nur 30 Euro. Uh, it costs only 30 Euros. Und haben Sie vielleicht auch eine Bluse in Weiß? And have you also a blouse in white? Ja, die Bluse hier kostet 23 Euro. Wir haben auch das T-Shirt in weiß hier im Sonderangebot. Nur 10 Euro. Yes, the blouse here costs 23 Euros. We also have the T-Shirt in white here on sale. Only 10 Euros.